None of this would have been possible without the total support of director Nicholas Winding Refn. Earlier this week, we did a special Radio 1 Rescores Drive premiere event, and Nicholas linked up with us via Skype from LA. Well, when I heard about it, um, I was just like, wow. I, you know, all this great talent that's out there, and what if that can inspire people to create it's only what it's all about. I think that technology has allowed us to a new frontier of accessibility of creativity. And I think the Zane idea was so odd and strange at the same time, incredibly wonderful and refreshing. And if I could be part of that, you know, I'm all for it. Hi guys. Hi. Good to see you. Hello. How are you? This is Michael. Hello there. And this is Jonathan. Thank and these Michael. guys have been hard at work putting it all together and we're going to come and take a look for the very first time and see how it's all working. How is it? Sounding good? It's working. All right, cool. Let's check it out. Come on. Come on, get it, get it, get it. What's going on right now is we're just having a preliminary look at the way the music works with the movie for the first time. This is the very opening scene with Eric Pritz soundtracking the first job we see Ryan Gosling as the driver doing. And we haven't heard this yet with the sound effects attached because when Eric sent it, he sent it almost like a music video. So we're obviously thrilled with the way it's come together. The challenge hasn't been to, you know, put a list together of artists we want to work on this film because the movie was born for something like this, you know. The way they used the music in the original was perfect, but there was so much space to build music into. But the challenge has been getting the balance right so you're not detracting from the film because the pace of the film is fantastic. That's why people love it so much. That's why, you know, using people like John Hopkins in these little moments here. I mean, the most important thing was for me keeping a, a backbone single note, which would run through all of my tracks. <laughs> and um, in this case, it was C-sharp. Love it. <laughs> and uh, I know you like that note. Once I came across that idea, um, that idea of almost like a drone part which can sit there and you could, it could go dark or it could go beautiful depending on what the scene was. Yeah. And I, wanted it, I wanted them to be, each track to be really tied in so that each time you came back to one which I'd done you, you feel like, a, yeah like you're saying really, it's, it's a thread that, that runs through the film. It's a continuity, you know, and you, oh my god, I, you know, I can't thank you enough for it because it really has pulled a lot of the individual tracks and songs that artists like, you know, Banks has given us or you know, Lauren Vool has given us, you know, so many people have given us great bits of music, but you've mm. just made it all feel like we all sat in a room and did it together. Uh, action. 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 Rides out, ramps. No, I think it's cool. Hey, do you want to see something? Yeah. What's lovely about this is you think, oh, this is another ambient piece of music, you know? Is there any songs going to come in here? And then all of a sudden it turns into one. It goes up and down the step as well. 
perfect. It's perfect. I think that with the original track of that, it had this kind of this, this driven bass line to it, and it had that kind of late night, 80s kind of traveling feeling to it. And I think with that, th that scene is in the middle and that piece of music is reprised at the end. Mm. And what wa we wanted to do is just challenge the context of what that music did for this, because it would be pointless for us to come out and be like, oh, here's another college-esque moment. Mm. And I've got to say that I think that, that th that's some of the best scored scenes ever mm. so we were quite we were quite like stakes is quite, high stakes is high but the only thing we could do is completely re rem exactly rem yeah you can't as soon as you start it. referencing something or even no, listening exactly. to it we didn't we didn't even we watched the scene once just to see where the sound started and ended and we and that was it we, and that we, was then it, we yeah. left it and then we oh, just you smashed it man i mean you know first time we saw it, it was like everything we could have hoped you guys would deliver for it um so thanks, thanks for doing man. it <laughs> The scene is, in particular is, is, um, is an important one because Banks was one of the last artists to, um, to send her song in and they were really dedicated to the project but she's been on tour and incredibly busy so they didn't have a chance to sync it up so they sent a piece of music they felt was right um, but we never had a chance to see it in context so we're having to kind of sync it ourselves now but it's working really well. All the scenes I had with Ryan were quite scary scenes. And the very first thing we shot was the scene in a hotel room where he's slowly putting on these leather gloves and approaching me and, you know, knocks me down on, on the bed with his hand across my face. And um, he was he was terrifying. He did it very well. And if you if you put yourself in that situation and you slowly watch someone put leather gloves on and approach you, you know nothing's good good is gonna happen. Wow, she smashed it. Laura and Vola absolutely smashed it. <sighs> Amazing. An incredible piece of work she did for that. Whoa. This is for the name of the big Yeah. How was the experience for you working on something like this Drive soundtrack? You know, we sent you some scenes. Mm -hmm. How did you find it? It was really cool. It was my first time ever doing something like that. Mm -hmm. And when we were on the road, like one of our good buddies, Tyler, is a producer slash DJ. And he's like scored films and he like really helped me out a lot. And he really helped me like translate my ideas mm. like a lot. And yeah, it was a really fun experience. One of the things I loved about the music that you sent through is that you are subtle actually. You're restrained in certain areas mm -hmm. with it. And actually that's true for pretty much everybody that's been involved in this project. I think that the film probably led that to a certain extent because it's a very, very restrained film in terms of sound. You know, there's not a lot yeah. of music and dynamics going on. It's all very tense. Mm -hmm. um, were there moments when you're making this when you had to deliberately pull yourself back from... Yeah, no, no, like, uh, when I was working with Tyler, um, he was, like, there was, like, one part where it had, like, all these, like, crazy 808s, like, going off, mm. and I was, like, oh, that's so, that sounds so sick, and he's, like, oh, I wouldn't do that because you gotta know, like, they're talking right now, so you gotta, like, leave room for that, and I was, like, okay, and, like, we, like, took some out, like, and it, it made it way better in the long run. I came to my apartment, Shannon. How do they know where I live? 
you I was gonna call Bernie. I just wanted him to know that that it wasn't about that you're not interested in the money, that you, you just did it for the girl. What do you think about the film? What did you think when we first told you about the film and the film idea? I thought it was really cool, but I thought the original soundtrack was really sick, though. Right. Too. So it's kind of a little intimidating to try to follow that up. That's still cute, John. So we haven't looked at the best I deal. I need to look at the best oh, yeah, deal. No, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Sounds like Metallica. <laughs> yeah! No, about to I want to be back on the ground where my I love that bit. Dan killed it, huh? I want to dig my heels in the dark, feel it break between all of my tongue. Anything to stop floating around, running down, back down below. Oh, 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 oh. What do we think about Simon's vocal being out? And is there any way you can put even just a line? What does he say in his acapella? And is there even a point towards the end, just before the transition? He only goes, you're going to be looking over your shoulder, and it kind of goes silent for ages. Is there just a line that can just... You'll never know the way you make me feel so I can never show... All of that, about that at the front. You'll never know So I can never show It's quite nice as a line. Just coming in there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm sliding down the hole, you'll never know. It's to the bone to... That's the way to... That's, a, that's amazing. I'm sliding down the hole, you'll never know. You'll never know. It's to the bone. 